A lot of the time you're hearing on how beneficial it is to wake up early. A lot of the time you're hearing that successful people wake up early and that leads to a productive morning and a good day. You also see a lot of people try waking up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. for a 30 day challenge. I would like to do this as well, but since I already wake up at 5 a.m., I thought what other way could I do this challenge? What I ended up deciding on was let's try the opposite and let's try sleeping in for 30 days and see how that goes. See if there's any difference in my days, my productivity, my energy levels, my routine, and see if there's any other areas that get affected. Now, before people go and say what I'm doing isn't actually sleeping in, it is for me. My goal is to get around seven to eight hours of sleep every night, and during the week, I'll be set my alarm for 7.30, which gives me enough time to roll out of bed, make my smoothie, and get ready for work. The good news is I work from home, so that I'm able to roll out of bed and basically start work right after I make my smoothie. When it comes to sleep, in order to adopt it and get some good rest, it's extremely important to develop a good consistent routine throughout the week. So in order to get the recommended number of hours of sleep, I'm going to be trying to get to bed around 11, 30 and 12 during the week. But during the weekend, I'm going to be a little bit more flexible with my schedule and go to sleep around 12 just so I can sleep in a little bit longer. Going into this, I wasn't really sure how it was going to turn out. Over the last five years, I've been waking up pretty consistently at 5 a.m. And if I don't have an alarm set, my body will automatically wake me up a little bit after five. So I figured it might be a little bit of a challenge, but I thought if I went to bed late enough and I was tired, I'd be able to sleep well and sleep in enough to get some good rest. Boy, was I ever wrong, at least for those first few nights. And even though it's a weekend, my body usually wakes me up between five and six o'clock in the morning. I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue just because I'm going to stay up later and I think I'm going to be really tired and hopefully I'll be able to get a nice full eight hours of sleep and I'll be fully recharged tomorrow. So today was the first day that I was sleeping in and honestly I wasn't able to get the full eight hours and last night I was just tossing and turning all night and then I or my body ended up waking up at 6.20. This challenge is gonna be a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. Hopefully, we'll be able to get adjusted a little bit this weekend, but this is gonna be a little bit more challenging than I anticipated. As you can see, breaking my old habits and routine and making my body adopt to new circumstances was gonna be a little bit difficult. As with most things in life, it's gonna take some time to get there. Whether that's starting a business or YouTube channel, adopting new habits, or getting outside your comfort zone, it's gonna take some time and effort to get there. There are gonna be some tough nights, but focusing on your goal and why you're doing what you're doing is gonna help you persevere and get through those tough times. These first few nights proved to be a challenge for me. I was tossing and turning all night and my body was waking up early in the morning because that's what it was used to. And these first few days and nights were gonna be a challenge that I had to overcome. And that was just gonna be a few days of being really tired. I was rather surprised with how quickly my body was able to get adjusted to waking up later and staying up later. It was around the third or fourth day that my body seemed to get adjusted to this new routine, which is good for me, my body, and my sleep. Throughout the first week, I'm not sure if it's similar to jet lag, but I found myself extremely lazy and procrastinated a lot of my tasks and my goals. After work, I found myself on my phone thinking that I had a lot of time left in the day to get to my tasks and goals, so I would just procrastinate and I would scroll on my phone, and then by the time it got to be later and I had to do my tasks and my goals, I would be tired and didn't feel like doing them, which led to more procrastination, and I just didn't end up doing anything really the first week. What I decided to do was come up with a list of stuff that I could do if I ever caught myself procrastinating or aimlessly scrolling on my phone. The good news is, is that this worked, but it was just for a brief period as it was just simple chores to do around the apartment instead of something like scrolling on my phone. The hardest part was getting to the stuff that mattered to me, my highest priority tasks. What ended up kicking me and giving me that nudge that I needed to actually do these tasks was that it was the first time in a few months that I wasn't able to accomplish my weekly goals. I ended up falling behind during the second week of this challenge and I realized that I need to be better and start taking those actions that are gonna help me accomplish my weekly goals. After that week, I doubled my goals for the next week and even though I wasn't able to achieve it, I was able to achieve more than what I would have if I just set out my normal weekly goals. I ended up getting caught back up with my goals and I wasn't behind anymore and I think a big aspect of that was that failure. I hadn't experienced a failure on my weekly goals in a while and that was that extra push that I needed to get me in the right direction. I ended up getting caught back up on everything and I had a thought that if I kept up this pace, I would even be able to get ahead on my tasks. I wasn't able to get ahead, but I was able to get caught back up and maintain this pace throughout the rest of the month, which is good. 
When we adopt these new routines and habits, there are going to be hard times and failures along the way. We need to realize why we're doing it and not think short term. Realizing the long term goal and where it's going to get us in the future. Most stuff isn't going to come to us or happen overnight. We need to be willing to put in that extra work and effort even when we don't feel like doing it. I know this might not be for everyone where some people are night owls and they get their most productive work in at night, whereas other people are morning people and they get their most productive work in, in the morning. But some different takeaways that I got from this challenge, starting first with what I liked, was that it kind of seemed like there was more time in the day. When I wake up early, I got my morning routine which takes up my first three hours of the day and then I work for about eight hours and then after that I have about four to five hours before I go to sleep. I think when the day gets split up into three different parts like that, it kind of seems shorter whereas when I was doing this challenge, my day got split up into two eight hour segments. It might just be me but I thought I had more time in the day but I just didn't utilize it very well. Another aspect I enjoyed is that when I wake up early, I usually have a mid-afternoon crash Whereas when I was doing this challenge, I think only about two or three times I had a crash and it was like a mid evening crash. So it was a really nice change of pace to go from majority of my days having a mid afternoon crash to rarely ever having a crash. Moving on to the areas that I wasn't a big fan of. The first would be that I felt like I was starting my day off behind the ball. During the weekdays, I would usually roll out of bed, make my smoothie, hop onto work, and it just felt like I was spending my mornings trying to catch up on everything that I had to do. Next, and this could fall on my end for not trying to compensate for it or fix it, and that's having structure in my days. During this challenge, I didn't really have much structure in my days, and I'm someone that thrives on structure. If I were to do this long term, I would definitely need to create more structure in my days, and that might limit my procrastination, my screen time, and that kind of brings me into my next point. The amount of time that I was spending on my phone just seemed to be way too much. At the start of this challenge, I was spending one to two hours more on my phone than what I usually was, and this could just be a snowball effect from not having structure on my day. I did improve upon this throughout the month, but I still was procrastinating and spending more time on my phone than what I usually had. Lastly, I kind of talked about this earlier and this falls on my end with my mindset, and it's just having the wrong mindset thinking that I had so much time left in the day to do my stuff before I had to go to bed. This just led to procrastination, and then by the time I had to do this stuff, it was late and I was tired and I wasn't able to put out my best work. I know some people prefer to stay up late and work, but for me personally, I'm looking forward to going back to waking up early. I didn't find that there was a significant impact on my daily routine and goals. I was able to keep up and maintain except for that one week, but I didn't find I was extremely less productive or more productive, maybe slightly less productive, but it's just finding whatever works for you and whatever you prefer seems to be the key. To be honest, it did take some time and effort before I was actually able to get into a consistent routine and my body adjusted. Like most things, you're gonna have to stick through those tough times if you're wanting to overcome or add or change something in your life. I'm not looking forward to readjusting my body back to early mornings and early nights, but I know after a couple of weeks, I'll be back in my normal routine. As always, thanks for watching and let's level up.